Okay, now that we've checked out the browser and checked out the simple view, let's go to the advanced view. In the advanced view, we have it split into thirds. Basically, the top section is our global section, and also where we can see four different sources of sound. And then we have a morph pad that allows us to do some interesting morphing between the settings that we see in these sources. The middle section is a modulation section. Essentially, any controller that you see up here that's a knob, we can have controlled by the modulation section. So if I was to click on tuning for source D, you'll see that the modulation source is automatically changed down here. So this modulation section is dynamic. If I click over here on volume, you'll see it says volume C. So any control that I click on, you'll be able to see what modulator is affecting it. And if I wanted to assign another modulator, I just click on and choose the modulator of my choice. You can have up to 16 on any one knob, which is pretty crazy. Down below, we have what we've seen before, performance, ARP, and effects. So let's go to the file menu and choose clear. We're starting from scratch. If I go to the first source, I'm going to click on A. And I'm going to load a virtual analog waveform. So I'll choose basic and maybe do a square wave. Now here's what's pretty crazy. Square wave, we have control over volume and panning and tuning and all that sort of thing. We can solo it here. We see that it's in stereo. It does have an edit mode, which gets really crazy. We're going to have to come back to that. So I can close the edit mode by coming over here to this X. Volume, key tracking, looping, and then check this out. Three separate filters just for this one source. So that's pretty crazy. That means that as I look at these sources up here, each of these four sources has three filters available to it. Not only that, but that's 12 filters altogether before we even get to the global filter, which has two separate filters. And we can run through it in parallel or serial, or we can have a blend. If I go inside the source, you can see that I also have serial versus parallel, but that's between all three sources at once. The amount of filters that you get are astounding. This all comes from Camel Audio, who has some really awesome filter types. From low-pass filters, band-pass filters, high-pass filters, then we start to get into some really weird stuff, like comb filters. And then if you don't want to have a filter, you can also do something like compression, or FM modulation, or formant. You have distortion, like mech and tube distortion. Pretty cool stuff. Now, if you start stacking a lot of filters on, like right now, we do have three separate filters we have available to us within this one source. But if you start stacking them and stacking them and stacking them, you'll note that your CPU is going to take a pretty considerable hit. To the right of the filter section, which we can turn on just by going here on any one of those three, we have a send. So the send here, if I go back to global, this will make a little bit more sense. We can send a filter one and filter two. So right now it's going to filter one. If I was to pull this up to the center, now I'm going to filter one and filter two. If I was to pull down and go to FX, or F1 and FXA and do a mix, now the sound is going to go to filter one, and then it's going to come down here to my effects section and I have four independent effects buses, one for each source, and then I also have a main that everything is going to go through. So after our source travels through the filter and goes to the effects section, we get to the master section. So we have our volume, our panning, and our tuning for the entire instrument. Down below our master section, we can decide how many voices we're going to have per source, but you can only do it either by independent source, or you can do all, which is going to be how the entire instrument behaves. Okay, so now that we've gone through the global section and some of the sources, let's check out how modulation works. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are 
outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.